I am going to try and weave in a little bit on leadership, introduce Codizen, and show you two new things we are developing in 10 minutes. Um, I'm Joe Fries. Uh, quick on me, I was a uh, CEO of a company in Orange County that I sold to a public company in 2015. And the one thing I learned, we took a business, we sold business forms. And we took that business, but th by the time we sold it, it was a company that was one of the largest brand management and marketing services firms on the West Coast. And the one thing I learned during that was we were going to be uncomfortable for a long period of time. And I stand in front of you today telling you I'm pretty uncomfortable because I'm not a technology guy. And Mike Merchant, who you're going to get introduced to in a minute, convinced me to come to work for him after doing consulting work for him for two years full time in January. So here I am today because Mike couldn't make it down here. Um, the only other story I'll tell you real quick, I met. I, I am new to KCOM and Sanan probably six weeks in. Somehow he even got me to Mexico pretty quick. Um, we decided we wanted to make Mike a thought leader, and you'll, you'll meet him in a minute, and with some of the technology we're working on. So I started doing some walking through my Rolodex trying to find a PR firm, and ultimately ended with Sinan about six weeks ago. So it's been a very fast six weeks with lots of connections and things like that, and ultimately I end up down here. So let me talk a little bit real quick about Codizen. Um, I let my team there have some creative uh, thought with what they wanted me to present here. A bunch of great kids back there in our office in Irvine. Um, there's our branding and our logo. It's a 17-year-old digital engineering agency. We specialize in producing intelligent marketing solutions for large clients, our main client is Meta. We, we have a high concentration, do a lot of work for Meta. Um, it's not your garden variety website. These are things that have a lot of data science behind them, incrementality, um, something where we're trying to do something and, and create a lot of improvement um, and, and not simple, you know, working with a lot of proprietary systems. Um, we operate under this idea, rethink the experience we're trying to give someone and rethink the result. We're trying to help someone with a better result. We sort of drive the business that way and, and try to make things simple for people. Um, as it relates to the theme today, thought leadership, you know, we want, we're in the middle of trying to make Mike particularly a thought leader in web technology. Um, but one thing I'll say internally also we're trying to work on, we, the, the business two years ago had a hell of a time trying to hire people. Everybody was grabbing all the, the best digital engineers, the best kids out of college. We're seeing that change a little bit, but we realized we had to be an innovative place to work because a lot of these, you know, some of the brightest minds that work in this stuff, they've got choices where they want to work. And if they were going to come to work for us, we had to make the place a great place to work, but it had to be exciting. And some of the challenges we've had is we were stuck with, we have this one main client and they're working on the same stuff all the time. That's boring to them. These bright people, they want new challenges. So. Ultimately, Mike's that kind of person too, and ultimately we've come up with a couple concepts that they're really excited about. One's the immersive web, and the other one's perception, and I'm going to introduce them both to you, two new technologies we're working on that we're about to take to market. Um, so listen to Mike for a sec. At Codizen, we believe the future of the web is immersive. For 17 years, Codizen has been pushing the envelope of what's possible on the web. Now we're bringing the familiar 2D web into 3D environments that work on any kind of device. Hi, I'm Mike Merchant, CEO of Codizen. I tried the Oculus VR headset over 10 years ago, and I thought, can we use this to make browsing the web work like the interactions in Iron Man? 10 years later, there are millions of people with VR headsets, browser standards for 3D content, and soon, AR glasses that will be even smaller and lighter. There are still two challenges for a more immersive web. One, millions of people that don't have headsets. And two, jumping into virtual environments in 3D can be jarring. We're taking a different approach. We're making 2D content work side by side with 3D enhancements. And we're making these experiences work right inside the web browsers we all use today. This way, the immersive web can be both innovative and accessible. 
So ultimately, what we're trying to do is create more immersive experiences. There's only so many headsets out there, but we've recognized that there's other ways to use that type of technology without even a headset. So we think the key markets we're going to take this into is a lot of it's going to be in training, um, product knowledge type markets, could be in education, where people want something that has increased engagement, it's a lot more impactful, um, improved connection with a brand potentially. We think the auto industry has got some prime examples where we want to try and use the technology. But we do know that you get improved learning and higher retention if you can give someone that's something that's more immersive. The challenge we've had is not everybody wants to put a headset on. And we've learned that a lot with Meta and, and, and doing a lot of work for them. It's, it's still sort of a clunky device. There's not that many of them out there yet when you really look across all markets. So we're creating this whole other way that we think we can create an immersive experience without having to wear a headset, which is the unique thing about it. Or you could wear a headset. So that's one idea we're tackling. The next one's perception. So uh, oh, about two years ago, the company and the, the digital design team there went to Mike and said, look, we're doing all this work in color, and there's this book here. Um, and the book by Kobayashi was sort of the, they said, can we turn this into an AI tool? Is there, is there a way to create something that selects color with real science behind it? And Mike and his team have spent about two years, we've invested about $2 million developing the tool. So let me try and walk you through it. This is typically not a two minute demonstration, but I'm gonna try and do it in two minutes and I created a video to do it. Um, so let me, let me try this with you. So what you do is, in the top corner here, you go in and select what industry you're in and you type in a word. We typed in delicate and it gives us some color palettes. Go back in again, we type in nostalgic it gives you a different set of palettes. Again, created by a machine learning model and a bunch of data that we've been throwing in um, to create different types of palettes. And depending on what you want, you know, we could create other words, we could put multiple words in, again, without getting too deep into it. But there's, a there's some real science behind how the colors have been selected versus how it's typically Subjective. We talked about it's been in branding over the years and you had to go select a color for your company. Now we have something where you can actually um, pick colors with the science behind it. Now, the next step in it, it allows it. I'm going to show you the, our, the way we extract something. Again, real brief. I put a picture up here. I select certain colors out of the picture if you can see that and say, I want to know what these mean. I want to associate these words with certain colors. I bring it down, analyze it, and those colors came up real briefly with fresh, refreshing, pure, simple. Then we go and beyond, and we give you a long description based on the AI and the machine learning so far we've built about what these colors mean. So ultimately, we think it's a tool. Um, we've taken it to the paint industry, and we're in some deep discussions with a couple of paint companies for use in helping people select paint and colors for their home for do-it-yourselfers. Um, we think it's got a lot of applications out in the branding world. Um, and as we get further into this whole immersive web concept, we think there's a lot of tie-in together and how we can marry the two technologies and, and utilize them in creating experiences for people with some real science behind it. So long or the short, that's a quick demo of both.